how to create smooth animated captions in Premiere Pro. So here's some footage with Alex Hormozy and some dialogue. Go to text and if you don't have text, go to window and down to text and it will open up. In the text pane, under the transcript tab, hit the blue transcribe button and it will take a moment to transcribe the dialogue. There's your dialogue. If you need to make corrections, you can double click any word and make corrections, but if it's all good, hit the two C's to create captions. In the caption options, open up the menu, set the maximum length of characters to 17 in this case, set the lines to single, and up here you can save those settings as a preset in case you need to create captions again in this project. Hit create captions and it will create your captions. As you can see, they've appeared on the subtitle track in green there, and you can also see them in the program window. Click and drag around the captions to group them together. Head up to properties. We just need to make one change here, and that's to change the alignment and transform to center. Now we could style the captions here, but we can't animate them here. So we're gonna add them to the timeline so that we can deal with them like graphics. Right click on the subtitle track, click add new track, click okay. Now group all the captions, hold down alt and drag to copy onto the new track. This is just for a backup in case anything goes wrong. Make sure you click the eye to hide those and move up to titles and graphics and then down to upgrade caption to graphic which will add the captions to the timeline so that we can now animate and style those on the timeline. Select the first clip. You might need to click on the caption in the display to see the bounding box. Now go to the font. We're gonna go for Helvetica New Bold. Hit the two T's to change the captions to capitals, change the font size to 70, and change the letter spacing to minus 50. We'll keep it white for these captions, so scroll past the color, and under the shadow settings, change the distance to 16, the size to 13, and the blur to 170. Now scroll down to the link style section, hit the plus button. This is where you can save your style as a preset, so you can use it again and again in this project and future projects, so you'll never have to do what we just did again. And there's your new style listed underneath link styles it's also saved in the project bin as you can see here you can also right click the style in the project bin press export and save to wherever you want so you can use in future projects we can now add that style to multiple clips at the same time just group the clips and drag the style onto the clips and now that we have this style on the caption clips let's move on to the effects move up to the effects pane and search for transform drag transform onto the first clip then search for gaussian blur and drag gaussian blur onto the same clip now move up to effect controls, let's open that up, select transform, move the playhead to the beginning and hit the stopwatch on position, which adds our first keyframe. Then move to the vertical setting here and drag it down a touch. Then move the playhead to the end of the clip or just towards the end of the clip. That's about a second long just under, which is about the right speed for what we want. Press the reset button here to create a keyframe back at the caption starting position. Let's play that back. I'm just gonna adjust that first keyframe to start a bit lower to give it more movement. That's cool. Next step is to group the keyframes, right click, go down to temporal interpolation and then down to ease in. Now open up the menu, hover over this line and drag down to expand the view and then grab this handle on the right and drag it as far left as you can. So now the movement starts rapidly, has a slow tail as it eases into position. So let's just fold up that view and go to opacity. Make sure it's in the transform section. Make sure the playhead's at the beginning of the clip. Hit the stopwatch on opacity to create the first keyframe and set it to zero. Now move the playhead along to about halfway, just under. Hit the reset button, that will bring the setting back to 100. Group the keyframes, right click and go to ease in. Now head up to Gaussian blur with the playhead at the beginning. Hit the stopwatch on blurriness. Set it to 35, move the playhead along to where the opacity ends and set the blurriness to zero. Now group the Gaussian blur keyframes, right click and go to ease in. And if we take a look at that, that's what we want. Now let's save that effect as a preset. If you press control and left click Gaussian blur and transform, it will select both effects and then right click either one and go to save preset, name your preset, and then you've got the choice of three types. And for this preset, I'm actually gonna make two versions, one as scale and one as anchor to in point. Both types come in handy for this type of effect. Scale will adjust the effect to the size of the clip you're adding it to, whereas anchor to in point will keep your effect the same size regardless of the clip that you're adding it to. So if you have a long clip, scale will make the effect longer to fit the clip whereas anchor to in point will keep the effect the same size and anchor it to the beginning of the clip it won't stretch it so now we can add that effect that we just made to any clip we want so let's group the rest of these clips and head up to effects search for the preset we just made in this case caption smooth slide up when you hover over it you can see the description that we entered when we created the preset 
So now I'll drag that effect to the clips and you can see the effect we've made is now been added to all the clips. So to take it a step further, if you have a phrase that you'd like to highlight, we can make things more interesting by separating the words, changing the sizes and staggering the words in the phrase to bring them in at different times. So in this vid, Alex Hormozzi says, if you're never going to lose, you're never going to win. So I'm going to take that phrase and separate each bit into different parts and we'll affect it so that it comes in in a staggered way. So I'm going to keep the word your on its own and then I want never on its own as well. But at the moment it says never going. So I'll cut that clip and the first half is going to be never on its own. So I'll delete the word going and the next clip is going to be going to on its own. So I'm going to add going to to that clip. And then the last clip just needs to be win and we can make that big to finish up with. And then all we do is extend the ends of the clip so they all overlap. As you can see right now on the display, they're overlap. We need to rearrange it. So you can click on each one and manually drag the positions of the clips to where you want them. And you can use the settings and properties to move things about as well as resize the font. It can get a bit hectic, so I'd advise to lock all the layers apart from the one that you're actually moving. Okay, so that's our arrangement. Let's have a look. Looks cool, apart from that third line doesn't have an effect because we kind of created a new clip by cutting one. So let's add the effect to that third clip and then run that again. You're never going to win. Okay, so we're kind of there. Let's just adjust the end so that it staggers out as well as staggers in. And then I'm going to add a blur out effect to the end. And I made that in the same way as the slide in, but reversed. So adding that to the end is an extra touch you might want. Let's play that back. And so if you're never willing to lose, you're never going to win. Hope that helped. See ya.